Everything that is born comes to an end one day. From the formation of stars, the creation of the elements in stars to the most complex, complex organism on our planet Earth, all comes into existence and vanishes again. There have been major scientific advances in our understanding of the many structures of the universe as well as the subatomic world. We understand that nearly all the chemical elements are produced inside stars. Those are the very building blocks out of which we are made of. At this subatomic level, we find an overall entanglement where all is connected in some way. As humans, we see ourselves separate, for example, from a tree or another person, but do not realize that we could not exist at all without this coherent structure and web of interactions involving all of the entire universe. How do we reconcile this difference of scientific findings that all is connected and our brain telling us we are individuals. If we could feel as part of this great universal cycle where everything comes into existence and vanishes again, not just as a theory, but as an actuality, a great number of problems we have or create could be resolved. So what, what are we going to talk about? What about identification? How identification or we identifying with something makes the content be solid. I can feel that when there is a information coming up, how the brain can, when it, it when it takes it, and then I, I, it identifies, then it makes it his thought. And we don't see that process that we identify, and the, and then we act upon or react upon this. If we don't intensify, what do we experience? Mm. Uh -huh. What is living without identification or what is experience without identification? Yeah, that's two questions here. What is living without identification mm. and what is is there any experience, experience without identification? Mm. Yes, yeah, as soon as you see what is, there is life. The mind is not dull anymore. You know what is? is what it is in a way, but I identified the situation that we are in here, mm -hmm. maybe in one way, 
you know, and maybe you do it another way. But when there is identification, the mind is dull. It's not alive. Oh, <laughs> you are hard. <laughs> <laughs> You're very hard. Wow. No, but it's it's true. It's not looking at. When you identify, you stop looking at. So identification is a kind of conclusion. Would you say that? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And conclusions make. Hmm. It's a sign of a mind falling asleep. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Exactly. Dullness in the sense that it's not. Yeah, it is asleep. It is asleep. Hmm. Oh. It's a hard one in a way. Only if you judge it. Only? If you judge it. If you don't judge it, it's just how it is. And it's what happens to... But it's how, it, it kind of, it takes away any story, huh? Yeah. It takes away any story. Mm. There's no personal story anymore. Mm -mm. There's no, nothing exciting happening anymore. <laughs> you know? That's uh, what we think. That's, that's uh, my first impression. That's what I think, yeah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. And it is the the me or the I that wants to have like lots of you that <laughs> thinks that mm -hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't mean that it is uh, that way. No teacher, just you and I and nature. You're no father, you're the son. Just you and I and nature In us the Father and the Son And the Holy Ghost In that garden In the garden Wet with rain We are in a very beautiful place in the mountains in Switzerland. And I remember a saying of Krishnamurti, which I really love above all. He said, beauty is when the eye is not. Trying to to see what well one sentence or something which has been very striking or very important in what K says. Yeah, I felt uh, last night I was thinking about that and I felt it's a bit difficult because I have been listening to K for a long time and he he was saying great many things, which each time I receive as a sort of shock. But I, I wouldn't like to to uh, to choose. <laughs> 
So the problem is, um, let's say, for example, yesterday, when he talked about, uh, well, he said this sentence incredible, can you live without a cause? I took it in myself and I think I'm going to keep it because it's really a question, it, it, for me it's really a, a deep question. But at the same time, I am wondering if what you have been asking was more something which covers a bit the whole of what he's saying. Maybe I imagine that. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that it is something he said to David Bohm in a, in a conversation. And he was, they were talking about attention. And suddenly he said, you see, sir, I'm not sure it's not a bit ridiculous, but I think the universe is in a state of attention. And you know, when you like nature, when you are observant, you can't see very well that your dog is very attentive, that your cat is very attentive, that the birds are incredibly attentive, that the flies are attentive. Every, every living thing is attentive. But the universe, as a whole. As a whole. The whole universe in a state of attention. It just, uh, I don't know how to put it, it just goes through you, you know, it just, it just swallows you <laughs> in a yeah. sense. Yeah. That's, that's what I think it would be something which is really opening, opening an immense space for me. <laughs>